Um, I mainly, and hopefully the overhead's on as it works ready. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, say that I was a member, I am a member, probably still working, um, on the uh, stakeholder committee for the comprehensive plan. And I mainly want to do a thank, a big thank you uh, for all the public input that we got. And it wasn't just the comp plan, it started with the strategic plan, which had started a year before that. And we had, uh, it took a large effort by the city, it took a large effort by the community to go to multiple locations, multiple nights, and give uh, what's been some of the um, biggest levels of um, public input for the processes we're trying to uh, gather for the strategic plan. So what it gave us was the opportunity to use that input from the public on the strategic plan to focus some of our comprehensive plan efforts. So I just wanted to show this. This is some of the, um, the key optimal points of optimism and greatest concerns that came out of the strategic plan process. And again, this gave us some ability to look and help further the optimistic factors that um, we got as public input, but also focus on the land use concerns uh, under uh, the strategic plan where development and growth pressures were, there was a concern about those leading to poor outcomes and increased congestion and pressures um, on the infrastructure and misalignment with character. This is a high level input called out of a lot of feedback, but then it got granular in the strategic plan. So it gave us the ability, and many of these amendments tonight speak into some of these issues that we were focusing on. So I just wanted to point that out. And again, thank everybody for the city for the opportunity for the public input and for the public to speak up. It was in person, it was on surveys, and it was significant uh, compared to the prior periods. Um, this is the chart that uh, Council Member Palermo was talking about, and it lists, maybe I can scoot this down. You can see the public uh, vote column there, so that the presentation of this by the, by the staff for putting together the information on the amendments and showing the public input it was very helpful. So it was a, a, a protracted process uh, with a lot of considerations. Uh, and I just wanted to show that that's a really good way to see what the feedback was through the different processes. That's page 52 of the, comp, of the agenda packet for tonight. And the other piece I wanted to talk about, since I have a minute left, two minutes, is um, I wanted to just mention that one of the goals, and there's not a one-size-fits-all on residential um, zoning for the city, and what we were trying to do, and some of these amendments tonight speak to, is look at those bottom bars, I hope you can read them, estate residential, suburban residential, neighborhood, active, see how they overlap. What that means is that certain categories of zoning like an 18,000 square foot lot or a 9,000 square foot lot would be available in multiple character areas in our city. And I think that's real important that we're not trying to make a one size fits all in one character area is just a, a cookie cutter. It's an assemblage of different housing types that are available. And that overlap that you see on the bottom of the chart accomplished that. So that's part of what the amendments were about tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Claire. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and for your comments.